Lieutenant Colonel George Bivens, Deputy Commissioner of Operations for the Pennsylvania State Police. Joining me today is District Attorney Deb Ryan, Chief County Detective David Sassa, Rob Clark from the U.S. Marshal's Office, Chester County Commissioner and Prison Board President Josh Maxwell, and Acting Chester County Prison Warden Howard Holland. As you know, on the morning of Thursday, August 31st, inmate Danilo Cavalcante escaped from the Chester County Prison. In a few minutes, I'll provide an update on where we stand with the status of the manhunt for Cavalcante. But first, I know you, you all and the public have had a number of questions about the actual escape made by Cavalcante. I'm going to turn this over to Acting Warden Holland to talk about that. I'd ask that following his remarks, you hold any questions until the end of our briefing, and we will be happy to take questions at that time. Thanks, sir. I just want to ensure that we know the gravity of the situation and how it's impacted our community negatively. Moreover, to the victims of this individual, I want to make sure that they know that we are consistently and consciously thinking of what they're going through and give out the fact that they continually are in our thoughts and prowls to make sure we bring Mr. Cavacanti to justice. So good afternoon. I am Howard Holland, the Acting Warden of the Chester County Prison. I am here today to provide preliminary details of the escape of Danilo Cavalcante. Let me begin by addressing the escape of Igor Bolt, which the media has been reporting on. Igor Bolt, which escaped on May 19th of this year. This escape was similar to the methodology of the escape by Cavalcante, and the escape by Igor Bolt allowed the prison to identify a deficiency in the exterior exercise yard where the escape occurred. This is also the same area, the escape yard, where Calicanti was located prior to his escape. The exercise yard improvements undertaken after Bolt's escape were intended to address the escape route from the yard to the roof area. Security consultants were brought in and improvements were based on the consultant's findings by a contract to security service. The improvement consisted of additional razor wire being placed in the yard area at the wall where the escape occurred to block access to the roof. The escape of Calicante is not just being internally investigated. Because it is in criminal nature, it is also being investigated by the State Attorney General's Office. The video of Cavalcanti's escape has been turned over to the criminal investigators. I will review the exact timeline and show a video of Cavalcanti's escape from the exercise yard at the end of my remarks, but can confirm that it does show that Cavalcanti escaped at the same location as Igor Bolt, but for Cavalcanti, there was razor wire to contend with before reaching the roof. Secondly, Chester County Prison uses proven countermeasure security that are an industry standard. For example, high fencing, razor or barbed wire, secure doors or gates with sally ports to control movement, video cameras, and most importantly, correctional officers, all of which were in place and remain in place. One of the issues brought to light as we conduct our internal investigations on Cavacanti's escape is that once the additional razor wire had been added to the escape route following your bolts escape in May, it was determined by our security advisors that this one level of security was sufficient. In fact, what was perhaps overlooked was the fact that addressing the single point of physical countermeasure should have been bolstered by additional means. We are addressing that. On Tuesday afternoon, yesterday, we had engineers from Trans Systems, a company which was selected by Lancaster County to design their new prison, brought on site. They are developing proposals for the prison board to fully enclose all outside exercise yards. While we believe the security measures we had in place were sufficient, they've proven otherwise, and we will quickly, we move quickly to enhance our security measures. Finally, I'd like to cover the human element of the escape. One key difference in the escape by Igor Bolt as compared with the escape of Cavalcante is the role of the tower officer whose primary responsibility is to oversee the inmates in the exercise yard. In Bolt's escape, the tower officer observed the subject leaving the yard area and contacted control immediately. That is why Bolt was apprehended within five minutes. In the escape of Cavacante, the tower officer did not observe nor report the escape. The escape was discovered as part of the inmate counts that occurs when inmates come in from the exercise yard. As I previously noted, the Pennsylvania Attorney General's Office will be conducting a thorough criminal investigation into the escape, 
which includes this element of the incident. This investigation is both necessary and welcome. The action of the tower officer present at the time of Calicante's escape are a key part of our internal investigation and we'll be taking appropriate action against personnel based on the results of that investigation. Here is the timeline of the events. At 8.33 a.m., Cavacante's block entered the exercise yard. At 8.51 a.m., Cavacante escapes from the prison, having crab walked up a wall, push his way through a razor wire, run across a roof, scale another fence, and push his way through more razor wire. At 9.35 a.m., Cavacante's block returned to the unit from the yard. At 9.45 a.m., officers on Cavacante's block notify central control of a missing inmate, and they conduct a special count. At 9.48 a.m., officers informed Central Control that Cavalcante was not there. There was a brief, there was a belief that he may have been in a phone visiting room, which was checked with negative results. At 9.50 a.m., the prison was locked down and the special count was conducted. By 10.01 a.m., the public escape siren had sounded and the 911 center had been notified. Just as we do in any security related incident, we will thoroughly review all of our practices policies and procedures and make improvements as appropriate. We are currently formulating plans to enhance security to include, as previously mentioned, fully enclosing all outside exercise yards, installing additional security cameras, adjusting officers' positions when inmates are in exercise yards, and additional security assets which would enhance overall security of the prison. As I close, I would definitely like to thank my local, federal, state, and law enforcement representatives who quickly responded to the scene once the escape was there. I know they have been diligently working to take Mr. Cavacanti back into custody, and we are very appreciative of their efforts. At this time, due to the nature of the investigations that are ongoing, I cannot comment on any individual investigation, including the internal investigations. With that, I'd like to turn it over back to Colonel Boots. So, I'm not sure where the Thank you, Warden Holland. I'll go on with my update, and again, we'll come back to questions uh, momentarily. Last evening, we had another sighting of Cavalcante by a resident in the area of uh, Chandler Road, Pensbury Township. Teams searched the area for hours, but were unable to locate him. An issue we did experience during that search illustrates some of the challenges our people are dealing with. In spite of uh, precautions, one of our tactical search dogs suffered a heat-related and, and emergency and remains hospitalized today. We are hopeful that he will eventually make a full recovery. As a result of that reported sighting, residents likely observed a significant increase in police activity. We did have a reverse 911 message sent out during the incident in an effort to inform residents of the issue. Additionally, as a result of that activity, we slightly expanded the eastern edge of our perimeter to include Creek Road. The district attorney and I have continued a regular dialogue with school districts in the area, updating them with changes in our operations that might impact schools. As this operation unfolded late last night, the Unionville, Chads Ford, and Kennett Consolidated School Districts made a decision to close schools. We continue to use hundreds of state, local, and federal law enforcement officers, canines, aviation assets, and various types of technology in an effort to keep the community safe and to bring this to as swift of a con conclusion as possible. <clears throat> Excuse me. We continue to increase the number of personnel assigned as conditions dictate. Residents can expect to continue to see large numbers of law enforcement officers in their communities and traveling to and from assigned locations. We continue to ask for the public's help by familiarizing themselves with the photograph and description of Cavalcante, to check security cameras they have, and to call us immediately if they believe they may have seen Cavalcante. Again, we ask res residents to please secure homes, outbuildings, and vehicles. 
Cavalcante has clearly already obtained some clothing and unknown other supplies, and we want to minimize any opportunity to obtain anything more. It is important that we keep pressure on him as we continue the hunt. I am also announcing that Pennsylvania Crime Stoppers has offered up to a $10,000 reward for information leading to the capture of Cavalcante. This brings the reward total to $20,000. Anyone with information is asked to call our tip line at 717-562-2987. 717-562-2987. Lastly, I want to recognize and thank the community for all of their support through this trying time in their lives. I and all of us working this manhunt understand the tremendous stress this puts on families and even businesses. In spite of that stress and unsolicited, we have had individuals, businesses, and, and um, I'm sorry, scouting, church, and other organizations show up at our command post with cases of water, food, and well wishes for all of our people. They are very kind and I can't thank them enough for their support. And now we will be happy to take any questions that you may have. Lieutenant Colonel, do you think he has more ability to hide from you than you thought he did when this thing started since it's seven days now? No, I don't think he has any more ability than we initially gave him credit for. I think that it's a very challenging area. I think we've had a number of these types of searches in the past. Some take uh, hours, some take days, some take weeks, and some take months. Uh, we're committed to the search, and we will find him. We will uh, bring him back and uh, into the criminal justice but system. The DA the board, you guys have access to this video. You saw this. Why did it take so long to alert the public of how he escaped? You said this for the warden? DA or the acting warden. Well, I can address that. That matter was referred to the Attorney General's office immediately. We are engaged in a thorough investigation. As I've stated before, our main focus is bringing this man in into uh, custody. Uh, we were putting all of our efforts to try to locate him. There was a simultaneous investigation into the prison escape, and today was a day that we believed we needed to bring in the acting warden to address the public about how he escaped. Is the Attorney General's investigation supplanting the Chester County District uh, Detective's investigation? That's correct. How is the same person was able to take the same escape route as someone just months previous, and really nothing was done to prevent that? Obviously, someone didn't do their job in instituting their remains. So as I said earlier, according to the document, we did have a consulting firm come out, identify how that individual escaped, and we thought we took appropriate measures to present that, prevent that with the razor wire. Again, the one thing we didn't take into account was a failure on the human element side. We only focused on the physical infrastructure and not necessarily the human element. So was there no one in the tower? Was there no one in the tower? Is that why you didn't get the call, or was he asleep? Someone was in the tower at the time. The person in the tower have seen him leave. The position of the towers are for observation posts, which okay. overlook the yards. Well, Lieutenant Colonel Bivens, 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 sir, does he have... Just, just one minute. I'm hearing from state police, local law enforcement, and marshals that you guys have multiple channels. Last night I witnessed this. There was an officer from Kennett Square. There was activity. That officer didn't hear anything. He asked the trooper, what's going on? He said, we're on a different channel. He was left in the dark, and I'm hearing now from, it was at least 12 officers in the past six days that told me they are not able to communicate uh, in concert with you guys. Are there multiple channels that you guys are operating? No, I would have to look into that specific uh, concern, and I'd be happy to do that. Maybe we can talk afterward, and you can supply me a name that we can look into it. What I would tell you is that we've spent a lot of time and effort making sure that we do have solid communications. We've got a lot of agencies working there. Uh, most have representation in our command post, and uh, and we would know immediately if we had a communication issue. So if there is something uh, that's isolated to a, a certain agency or something, we'd certainly want to take a look at that. Lieutenant but that's not a widespread concern. Has he obtained a weapon? And if so, what kind of weapon do you think he has? Uh, we have not uh, determined that he has obtained a weapon. When was the consultant brought in? And what was the name of the consultant again? So I don't have the exact date nor name of the consulting firm. Why? I can get that for you. Because I. Lieutenant I, Colonel Bibbs, uh, is any uh, infrared or heat seeking to f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f
there are a number of types of technology. I think it's certainly reasonable to believe something like that would be included in the array of technology that we would bring to bear. Hold on, hold on, hold on. In the Igarbol case, the inmates were distracting the guard. There was a fight on the basketball court is what the criminal complaint says. In this case, too, we had heard that there was also some sort of group of inmates or a line of inmates on that yard. Is that obstructing, or is it just that the inmates also figured out how to do this as well? So what is being taken to address that concern that you have an inmate standing there in that video? Is that guy a lookout? Are they all talking about how to do this? What are you doing there on the human side with the inmates to make sure nobody tries this again? So as I said, for the investigation of how or why this occurred, and including the investigation and questioning of the inmates that were there, that's done by the Attorney General's office. So I don't have the exact answer. Moreover, as we develop information into this, we are certainly going to look at what the actions of that tower officer were, why he didn't observe what was occurring in that yard. I'm not sure as to how or why. He wasn't, didn't address it at this point. Uh, why not share that video early on if you knew how he escaped? That's right. the question that everyone had. Again, as part of the investigation. Can you step up a little bit? Certainly. I'm sorry. As part of the investigation, that would have been up to the, the uh, Attorney General's office to release that and when it was to be released. At this point, we thought it was prudent and had permission to release it. Is the tower officer still on duty or is he suspended? Is he still working? He is on administrative leave. This is for the district attorney or the warden. Um, can you confirm or deny that the escapee had a map of the area that was hand drawn detailing the route from the prison to the Chester County Courthouse? Is that anything or is that anything? No, I have no evidence to suggest they had a map of the area. How about the warden? Have you written anything? I did not. This individual was listed as an escape risk. This was known that he was looking to do something like this prior. Why was he, and also, he's, he's here on a murder charge, he's being held here waiting for to be sent to state prison. He knows he's wanted in Brazil. Why is he roaming around the yard like this and not in a more secure location? And is that something you'll do as the administrator of the prison later is to reevaluate how high risk offenders have free access around the prison? So to answer your question, we will certainly evaluate how we're handling uh, inmates of that level, especially murder suspects. Um, but we also have to understand that these individuals have certain rights. So it's not a question of will we let them out again. It's certainly a question of would I put him back out there with a group of other individuals or there would be a one-on-one -on -one, and it would be a one-on-one -on -one from this point out. Do you believe the Brandywine Creek is a possible escape route? Do you believe the Brandywine Creek is a possible escape route? Officers are monitoring it on Route 1. Uh, I would say that uh, we are open to anything being a possibility as far as an escape route and we're actively working to keep that area secure. I wouldn't comment uh, on the viability of one versus another uh, escape route. Do you think he's out of your perimeter? Mr. I do Jesus, not. He's flipped your perimeter? I do not. What makes you believe that? Uh, everything that I'm able to see, the various sightings that we've had, um, other aspects of this investigation lead me to believe that he is still there in you that area. Sure. So on the northern end, uh, Route 921, on the 921 east. 921 or 926? I'm sorry, 926. On the eastern side, 100 or Creek Road. On the southern side, Hillendale. And on the western side, 52. How, how big is this compared to what uh, your perimeter was in how, days how, past? What square mile is this? Uh, offhand, I don't know what the square mileage is. is it is bigger? slightly, it is slightly larger slightly. than the perimeter that we had in the past. Um, quite frankly, uh, it was enlarged uh, for two reasons: one, uh, because of one of the sightings, and two, because we are also very cognizant of inconveniencing the public. Uh, quite frankly, uh, we probably could have kept that southern uh, perimeter a little further north but we probably would have interfered with traffic on Route 1 and uh, would have caused even more headaches for uh, uh, local residents and those passing through as well. And so we took the option that uh, we believe is equally secure and, um, and, and yet doesn't inconvenience residents nearly as much. Uh, the California was in custody since 2021. He would have been in jail at the same time as Igor Bolt. Is there any indication that the two of them had any contact? Uh, we have no information at this time connecting that, but again, uh, that is not up for me to determine. It's up for the Attorney General's Office on the investigation. Thank you, Mortenio. You have chosen to share this information today 
have the similarities between Eber Bolt's release not been made public? I'm sorry, one more time. Would you have chosen to share the details of Cavalcante's escape and the similarities to Igor's had the information not come to light yesterday? So I don't really think it's a decision of me releasing. I think it was appropriate with the coordination of the, the Attorney General's office to release it when they deemed appropriate. So that's why we're here. Lieutenant Colonel, is legal force authorized only in the perimeter or is it authorized statewide in the next state um, if he does not surrender clearly to... I have no authority in the next state. I have authority in Pennsylvania with the Pennsylvania State is Police. Is it statewide uh, lethal force if you've seen anywhere in the state or is it around? No, the, the directive pertains to this particular search. And the backpack, um, or the sighting today that was reported, I believe, by um, Box 29, where he might have been getting into a green, a dark green car, did that come to any fruition or is that? Uh, I'm sorry, I missed the first part of your question. There was a dispatch this morning that said that an individual with a backpack matching the description of the escapee got into a dark green car. No, that was not that related was not. to this. Warden Hall, was, Warden 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 was is the photo of Mr. Cavalcanti that we see here, was that taken just before the escape? I believe it was, yes, sir. Are you getting a lot of sightings throughout the region outside the perimeter, you know, other parts of Chester County, other counties where people are thinking that they're seeing him? And what kind of stress does that put on your resource? Uh, we are not getting a lot of sightings outside of the perimeter. Um, in fact, very few. They are being fully investigated. Nothing has led me to believe that any of them were uh, were actually him. Uh, and and we have the ability to uh, to do this operation and follow up outside of the area. Any as well. idea where he thinks he might be trying to get to? I do have some ideas of where he thinks he might be trying to get to, but I'm not prepared to discuss that. Last week, he's trying to head south. In the area? You said last week he's trying to head, you think he's trying to head south, maybe to Mexico or Brazil. Do you still believe him? I believe he's trying to head south. In terms of his final destination, again, I'm not prepared to discuss Are that. Are family members cooperating, or have it, has it been determined that they may have aided him? Uh, we're not going to discuss any um, any parts of the investigation involving the family. I just wanted to ask about the, uh, if you could take it back to the, uh, the, uh, the escape, uh, could you give an approximate width from one wall to the next? So I would say approximately maybe five feet, maybe less. Acting Warden, you, you said you're looking to fully enclose the yard. Yes, sir. Uh, does that, what does that, that mean that there's not a fence around it already? Can you explain? So the, permit, the yards are block wall with an exterior fence with an open top. Along that line are razor wires so someone physically can't climb the fence. Moreover, there's a smaller mesh fence on the second half, so the fence is probably 10 to 15 feet high. What the proposal is is actually to cap that whole thing in basically like as a cage so no one can physically climb out. All, all the way from the fence to the building? All the way to, and all eight yards that we have. Do you ever any other video that shows him practicing this? I mean, did he just boldly do this on a whim, figuring out that he could crap walk off, go off this wall? So we have no supportive evidence as far as video that shows him trying to do this, no other inference of him attempting it from any other inmate. Which, which yard is this? Is this yard A? Yard B, yard C, you said eight yards. So this is C yard. Thank you. you talked about the control tower and there being a guard in there that, that did not observe the escape. Is there any corrections officer that is physically present with the inmates when they're in that recreation area? And if, if not, why not? So there's physically no correctional officer in with the inmates. For the observation tower, it's to observe the inmates, one, obviously, for any type of injury, any type of fight that's going away, and any escape attempt. Why wouldn't there be someone just outside there, not inside? So typically, the other the other thing we have is a video monitor in that area. So we don't we don't put two staff in there. As part of the upgraded system that we're putting in, we are putting additional personnel not only in the tower but on the ground to observe anybody in the yard. Assistant Warden, was nobody monitoring this camera that you showed us that had the video of him crab walking up? So we have approximately 160 cameras at any one time that's monitored all over the facility, also inside to control doer movements to see who's coming and going. So with the time it took him to go up, and we all saw the video, it wasn't very long. So in that instance, if it wasn't observed and the camera didn't pick it up because either we weren't focused on that or we were focused on other things, it's feasible that, yeah, we didn't see it because we just weren't focused on it. Do you have a full complement of uh, office corrections officers working on the escape or were there posts that were vacant? There were no posts that were vacant that day. Oh. Lieutenant Colonel, you've said that you think he's heading south, Lieutenant Colonel, mm -hmm. but you've also said you do have an idea where you think he's heading, but you won't tell us that. But you do believe he's heading south, so you believe that he has more specific 
goals in mind that are closer to this location that he might be heading? Yes, my reference to heading south is more so in our area that we're searching. Um, what his final destination and the pathway to get there, uh, I have some ideas, but again, I'm not prepared to share those at this point. But is you he going me? east? I mean, he went from Longwood Gardens now to Chandler Road. That's east, not south. Yes. So why do you think he's going south? Uh, again, I'm not going to theorize or, or share theories in here, um, but yes, there was one sighting east. Is Can you tell us more about the sighting? What, what, it, what was yeah. he doing? What did it look like? And, and, who, and who spotted him? Uh, it was a resident of the area that observed him in a creek bed uh, near the rear of their property and uh, uh, called us. Uh, he was already traveling into the woods when that individual called us. Does he have family or friends in this area? He has some uh, family and uh, and and uh, some associates and in the general area. Is there anything to indicate? Uh, again, I, I, I'm not going to... Uh, Lieutenant Colonel, do you believe he's lost? Uh, I guess we'll know that when we uh, we find him and interview him for sure. I do suspect he's probably having trouble navigating. Have you discovered him. any items he may have used? Uh, we have not recovered anything from him out, out in the field. We have discovered through the, the photograph that you saw that, you know, he has a backpack, a duffel bag, and a hoodie, but uh, but we have not recovered any of those items. Okay. Okay. There, there, were items there were items found yesterday by some troopers. Um, any, any relation to him or anybody else that was out there? So wallet, phone, anything like that? Uh, items that have been recovered are being tested, but I don't have anything to confirm that any item we have discovered. Uh, well, can you tell us what the search actually looks like? Are you literally beating bushes? Is it mostly electronic? Is it driving? Are you putting up cameras? What does this look like? Well, again, I'm, I'm not going to describe every step of it because in the event that he does have access to media, I certainly wouldn't want to disclose all of that. I would tell you it's some of all of the above. It is a very uh, intensive search involving hundreds of law enforcement officers, involving state-of-the-art technology, but we are not sitting in a room someplace waiting for technology to solve this. Uh, in my experience, um, w w it'll be solved one of a number of ways, and so you've got to approach it with the physical searches. And so when I mentioned about the dog going down last night, that's because our people are out there, um, hundreds of them last night, uh, pushing through the woods, holding perimeters, um, checking on possible sightings, but uh, it's very hot, humid weather, and, uh, and, and they are working in that around the clock in order to keep the pressure on. That's part of that side of it. Um, at the same time, uh, there is a strong use of technology of a variety of types uh, to allow us um, to try and capture him that way should we not be successful in finding him um, through the physical search. The canine officer, what uh, department is the canine officer from? State police. When you play his mother's message, what does it say? Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but it's asking him to surrender. She doesn't want to see any harm come to him, and she wants him to come out peacefully and surrender to the police. Is it always the same message? Yes. Does Residents are uh, no, we don't have her approval to do that. Residents are wondering, at any point, will you slow down the um, or back off of the man? Whether it's three weeks, four weeks, will you keep a large presence, an active manhunt with the manpower you have until he's captured? We, we are not going any place until we have him in custody. We will continue the manhunt. Is there any plan this weekend in Kennett Square? Are you in conversations with organizers in case he's not caught by them? Yes, we are aware of that. We're in contact with... Uh, <laughs> emergency management, law enforcement authorities to make sure that we don't have uh, any additional concerns there. And um, uh, at this point, there's no reason to believe that uh, that, that festival would be impacted uh, by this search. Is there any indication that he's had, had uh, a phone or any communication device or has or had at any point during this? Uh, I'm not prepared to, uh, to discuss that aspect at this Question point. Question for the board, please. Uh, did Campbell Conte have any sort of disciplinary record, any infractions that you can share with us while uh, an inmate at the prison? To be honest with you, not that I'm aware of. Like, as, as I walked into this thing 18 hours onto the job, um, I haven't gathered all his back history. 
I had a deputy warden put that all together and get it ready for the detectives to look at. Was he living legally here and was he working before he was not legally here and uh, I can't answer the, uh, the working part. Lieutenant Colonel, you think you're wearing him down in any way? There is at least this conversation out there that because he's sort of emanating from Brazil that maybe he is comfortable in hot settings, that he's comfortable in this kind of environment. Do you have any sense you're wearing him down? He seems like he's pretty elusive here. I'm quite confident that we're wearing him down. Uh, regardless of the location, the background that a person comes from, uh, these are hot, humid temperatures. He's not living in shelter. Uh, has no regular means of uh, of uh, obtaining food other than if, if he's able to uh, to break in someplace or find something, scavenge something. So it's a difficult existence uh, out there for somebody that's trying to do this. Uh, that will definitely take its toll. I would also add that um, you know it's hard enough uh, as one of the law enforcement officers out there. It's hard enough for them uh, navigating in this in this terrain in this uh, hot, humid weather. But imagine if you're being hunted. It adds a whole different level of stress as opposed to uh, you're out there uh, trying to find somebody. That level of stress has to be wearing on him. Have you searched, the, have you searched local railroads, railroad tracks, trains passing through? There's some video that indicates you, you have yes. been doing that. If so, what, what does that yield? Anything? Uh, it has not, uh, but what we are attempting to do again is keep that secure perimeter and ensure that he does not have an opportunity to escape on a train. Given the condition of the, uh, the K-9, uh, does he face charges in connection to the... No, there was, there was no mishandling of the, the dog. They were monitoring the dog's temperature and they realized it started to elevate. Unfortunately, and they sought medical treatment for the dog immediately. Unfortunately, the dog's condition continued to worsen, even with medical treatment, um, until he was eventually stabilized, and uh, and and now I'm told uh, is doing somewhat better. We'll have to wait and see what the uh, the final outcome is. How many reports of thefts or break-ins you've had since this day? Uh, we have had um, a number. I'm not I'm not going to put a number on it, but a a small number of break-ins reported. I cannot specifically attribute any of those to him. Does Public Company have any history of survivalism, or do you know that he has any specific skills related to his uh, current um, status? Like, he's, out he's not had any formal training. Uh, I am aware that, uh, again, coming from Brazil, that uh, some of his uh, practices, he, he did go out quite a bit into the woods and things down there. Um, so has some experience um, navigating and lasting in the woods, but um, but not uh, any serious form of training. Right? I'm wrong, but it sounds like uh, since since the escape, there have been several sightings. There are, out of all the hundreds of officers that you have out there looking for him now, he's only been spotted by a law enforcement officer one time. The one time he was seen, and the officer gave chase. Is that accurate? I would have to go back and review it. That's probably accurate. I, I, off the top of my head, I'm not, uh, I'd have to look at each one of the sightings, but I believe that's probably accurate. Apologies that this was asked already, but is there any indication he's receiving help from anyone? Uh, again, as part of the investigation, we're not going to, uh, to disclose that, but that is something that we are constantly looking at. Um, even if he hadn't received it to this point, there's always a concern that he will start to receive it. And so that's something we're constantly looking at. I know you said the search perimeter in terms of roads. I'm just not familiar with the township lines. Do we think that that's Miss Bradford or East Brandywine there? That is that all encompassed in that township area, or is it all Wisconsin township? Is your search no, it's moved over into um, is that uh, Pens Pensbury? Pens yeah. Pensbury. Yes. Has a decision been made or advised the schools about tomorrow and Friday? Yet? We will be having a discussion with the superintendents, I'm sure, at some point yet today. Um, that has not occurred. What I would tell you is that those discussions are intended to give the superintendents as much information as possible so that they can make an informed decision. At some point, that information also changes, as it did last night, and, uh, and that necessitated another call. So, you know, we'll provide them an update, and, and then we will um, give them anything else that may develop. Question for the warden. When somebody's sentenced to life in prison, are they treated differently than than other people in the, the facility once they you 
you've taken everything you can from them, do you, are you more on alert for that person? So I, I can tell you that they have the same rights as everybody else, but given this complication what happened, we are certainly going to revisit how we're handling that in the future as far as one-on-one -on -one in the yard versus going out with a bunch of different individuals. So just so we're clear at the morning, you're going to be adding an extra officer in the tower to join the one that's already in the observation tower? No, for a point of clarification, we will have one person in the tower and physically somebody on the ground walking the yard. So we have at this time established who is going to monitor inside specifically video feeds from the yard. But I can tell you we are certainly taking that and revisiting the, and completely how we're handling all that video vis visualization to make sure that we're not missing things. As Deanna mentioned, there was a little bit of commotion that you could see in that video with one of the gentlemen who was shirtless running away from where Kamikaze was climbing up. Do you think that there was a distraction in place at that time to possibly throw off the officer that was in the observation tower? So I can't comment as to what people were doing or why. I can tell you at that time for recreational activity, there was a basketball net in that area, and there was an active basketball game going on, so I'm going to assume at this point that he was involved in that game. At the time of the escape, how many people watching the monitors, and how many monitors are there? For security reasons, I'm not going to develop how many monitors we have and how many people we have viewing it. Does Cavalcante um, speak both English and Spanish? Portuguese. Or Portuguese. Portuguese and some Spanish, very little English. Very little English. The next follow-up question is, what percentage of inmates at Chester County Prison speak only Portuguese or Spanish? Or, uh, I don't have the breakdown of demographics as far as who speaks what language, and because we don't we don't sector them off based on their language or what languages they speak. Is there a policy on uh, cell phone use when guards are on duty? Are they allowed to have them out? Are they allowed? To there are no cell phones allowed inside the prison area at all. And as far as we were talking about that dome structure that you guys are planning on, when can we see that actually in place? So yesterday we actually met with the contractors. It has been going to be forwarded to the commissioners for their review for possible acquisition and installation. Was it not obvious that that should have been something in place before? So I really don't want to get into what should have happened prior to without me actually being in charge of that facility. So I can't really question as to why it was or wasn't there. Had it come up in security assessments previously? I'm not sure if that's, that's true or not. All right. I want to thank you all, and uh, and again, we appreciate your help in getting this message out, keeping this front and center with the public. We need their support, and we appreciate your role in in bringing that support. Thank you.